Well, hey folks, Captain Dave here on the back porch once again, and this is an installment of Wolf Tales. Now make sure you stay to the end of this video because I am going to give you a little hint of what's coming up in the very near future. All right, on the back porch here, I'm going to tell you an old story about a guy who bought a brand new boat. It was a 22-foot Hydrosport. They don't even make it anymore. It was called the Ocean Skiff. It was a Hydrosport with no liner, rolled edge, but it had a, it was a hull and cap design. Very unique. That individual still has that same boat today. And I'm telling you, I don't know, I think that boat is probably 20, 20 years old. He still has the same engine. Needless to say, I don't think he uses it too much. But when this boat was brand new, this is a friend of mine that I've known for, it seems like, ever. He's sort of a, uh, he was a Navy, what would you call it, Navy drop-off here, like a lot of Jacksonville is, as people get out of the Navy in Mayport or in Jacksonville in general. But he was an original Miami boy. And he had this big red cruiser boat with an I.O. in it, inboard outboard, mer cruiser thing. More of a chick magnet kind of boat. Really, kind of a South Florida boat. Well, he got rid of that because he wanted to get really in the fishing. So we went and we looked at a. Uh, couple boats. He had a real hard on for this other boat that another guy had that was being sold. It was small, no storage. He liked it because he's like me. He's a classic guy. He's a utilitarian kind of likes the classics. He's of my same age group. Well, we finally went to a boat dealer and we saw this Hydrosport 22 ocean skiff with a 150 on the back. He gets it in one of our maiden fishing voyages in this, I guess in the spring or, I guess it was, yeah, it was kind of early springish, I guess you could say, which doesn't really fit this time frame, but was in a day that will, I'll never forget the rest of my life. We go out in his boat, we're going to go fishing. And we end up going to the Mayport jetties. And we anchor along the south side of the south jetty. So you got the north, the south, and we're on the south side of the south jetty. Next thing you know, you know, we put out the jetty anchor. And I'll put a picture here. I'll dub in a picture of a jetty anchor that we use. Usually it's a rebar style anchor that hooks into the jetty rocks and can be bent out very easily. So I go up to the bow, I drop the anchor and he sort of backs up and we hook a rock and we're sitting there fishing. And I think we weren't fishing for 15 minutes, 20 minutes and standing in the back of the boat, all of a sudden the boat lunges forward and we start moving what what's going on here we are this would be the end of the jetty okay end of the rock jetty and we're over here stern is facing east and all of a sudden the boat lunges forward and now if this is the jetty and the boat's here the boat starts moving forward the engine's not on, engine's not running, nothing. So we quickly reel in our lines, and I run to the bow, and I look, and the boat is moving down the jetty rocks with the anchor tight as Dick's hat band out in front of us. He's standing behind the console, totally dumbfounded. I'm looking behind me at him and going, what the hell? Next thing you know, along the rocks, if this was the end of the south jetty, we're right up in here and this is the jetty, 
we're here and we're cruising along the rocks. And I mean, it, like a couple, two minutes goes by and all of a sudden the boat starts veering off to the south. <laughs> we're just amazed. We're like, what the hell is going on? I guess it was that we were so shocked we didn't even know what to do. <laughs> so what happened was, is the boat veers off to the south and makes a turn. And then all of a sudden now we're at the, we're, if this is the end of the south jetty, the boat makes a complete turn, it turns around, and now we're going, heading out to sea, out into the ocean. You know, we're here we are. We're heading offshore. And there's all these other boats out there. And they're all anchored up. This is before the trolling motor craze, when people knew how to anchor and had skills. We're, we go by like a couple boats that are sitting there, and I'm standing on the bow, and I grab the anchor line off the cleat, and the funny thing was is his boat, I believe, the cleats were kind of off to the side, right? So when we're getting, we're getting pulled, we're kind of, skating along and I turned to him well actually I said something to somebody that was sitting in a boat that we just drove right by or we didn't drive we got pulled right by I turned to him and I said hey start the anchor or start the uh, engine so he starts the engine and I grabbed the anchor line now we're probably three or four minutes into this and I start pulling I'm like what the hell well, he starts the engine. I said, pull forward. And as we pull forward, I go out there and probably the largest manta ray that I've ever seen in my entire life comes up and it reminds me of the X-Files movie. And you'd have to remember back to the old X-Files movie. Oh, Jillian Anderson, hot, hot. She's got a badge, she's got a gun. And she's so fine. So the old X-Files movie at the very end, the, a spaceship breaks out of a glacier and just starts coming up out of the glacier. And that's what this reminded me of. All of a sudden, here comes the biggest manta ray I've ever seen comes up. And where's our anchor? Hanging right over its head. Since the jetty anchor is like a rebar grapnel hook, the anchor is laying right over its head. And I said, pull forward. And as, I pu as we pull forward, we kind of, manta rays here, we kind of drove up on them. I'm looking and I see the anchor laying over its head. And we kind of drove up over him and he sunk down. And I shook the anchor line in the chain and it came off. Well, after we checked our Depends undergarments, we just, I remember we just sat there totally dumbfounded. This thing came up and it was like a total alien spaceship. But what is the odds of being right up against the jetty when we anchored? With the jetty anchor in the rocks that a, man, a, a manta ray would swim under our boat that we were fishing on, swim forward, hit the anchor line, the anchor line went over it, and it got its head stuck with the anchor over the top of its head. What is the chances of that? Totally, totally one in a billion that that would ever happen. If something like that's happened to you, leave a comment below and let me know. Because let me tell you, <laughs> of all my years in boating and being at the jetties and things like that, I have never had that happen. And the funny thing was that we talked about is this boat was like a week old and who knows what that manta ray could have done and we would have gone into the rocks or something like that because the guy who owned the boat is like totally dumbfounded. And I mean, he didn't even start the engine. So I said, start the engine. 
you know. So uh, another thing that's an absolute one in a billion million type chances is this is I'm going to give you two stories for one here. I'm standing at the back of my boat because I'm the only boat that ever leaves out of Mayport that I ever see that has a full-blown cutting board fish fillet station right on the back of my boat. Not one of those that goes in the pole. I'm talking bait cutting fillet board with a drain and a whole nine yards. Trays with sinkers in it. I love it. It's one of the greatest things I have ever done to my boat. I'm standing there cleaning fish. I got a husband and wife standing on the dock watching me. I'm cleaning trout, taking their sides off, I'm skinning them. And as I'm doing that, and I'm looking back, you know, and I'm talking to the folks on the dock, these little turns, they're not seagulls, but they're turns. They got a wingspan, their whole, the whole bird is about this big. And I think I believe I mentioned this in some videos. The whole bird's about this big. They're wanting the fish on my cutting board so badly, they're swooping down, they're hitting me in the face with their wings. And I got a brand new Dexter Russell in my hand, flay knife. And I turn to the folks standing on my boat, or standing on the dock right next to the boat, and I said, the next son of a gun that comes down here and hits me in the face with his wings trying to get one of these fillets, I'm going to stick him. And guess what happened? One of those turns came down. And as I went like this, that bird came flying down and went right onto the knife. The knife went through his its entire body. The husband and wife were standing on the dock. The wife goes, <gasps> Oh my God! The bird goes like that. The knife goes right through its entire body. The bird just kind of goes, uh, and it's flapping like crazy. And I took the, the bird and I slung him. And he went flying over to the other dock, hit the dock on the side of the dock, flipped into the water upside down. And of course, they got black heads with a white body. And all we see is a upside down bird with red all in its chest. And I went like this and the bird floated away. What are the chances of that happening? That's two stories in one. That's two wolf tales of things that have happened to me. And that is just scratching the surface. Now, the second thing I wanted to tell you about, if you don't ever go there, don't ever notice, is I'm quite active on my YouTube channel's community page. That means you have to go to my YouTube channel, just not the videos. Literally click on Captain Dave Sport Fishing. That takes you to my channel. And if you click on community, it's like a forum. It's like a place where I can post stuff to let you know. And I did a post yesterday about a trend setting kind of product and I put a very small little obscure picture there that I'll be doing a video of real soon and it's something that you as a boat owner may want to check out because you may not pay attention to certain things that I do and this may be something that you really like. I'm not hawking it. I'm not trying to sell it. I don't gain a dime from it. I do a lot of these things just for you, to let you know. And that's where I put things on the community page. It's like a little forum. You can comment below. It's verbiage, a photo, or a poll, or a video link check that out. Go to my YouTube channel, Captain Dave Sport Fishing. Click on my name under this video, the name of my channel, and it'll take you there. And I'd say every once in a while, check it out. 
when you're seeing a new upload like this, just don't watch the upload. Go and see what's going on on the community. I'm trying to build that community of my subscribers and viewers so we can banter back and forth. And I'm trying to show you stuff. And you can comment about it. All right? So thanks for watching. Give the second installment, actually the third installment of Wolf Tales, a thumbs up. If you enjoy the stories, more is to come. More is coming. I just have these things pop into my head. It's early in the morning. I'm sitting on the back porch. Just got done my coffee. And I got somebody clapping to their dogs over here. Okay, wonderful. All right, so don't forget, subscribe if you haven't. Give it a thumbs up because you know that helps me. Till the next wolf tale, tight lines, and hope you catch them up. Mm -hmm.